What's going on guys? It's Jimmy here and welcome to our daily show where we discuss the fourth stimulus check update, the two new packages coming out, the next infrastructure package, which is part one, and the next stimulus package, which is part two, which they're working on both right now. And they're probably going to pass both of them together uh, side by side yet separately. So yeah, they're going to pass them together yet separately at the same time, if that makes sense. As well as on this show, we cover what is going on in the United States, as well as what is going on in Washington, D.C. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure to subscribe down below. It's completely free to do so, so you don't miss out on new episodes, which come out every day on our channel here at 10 a.m., 3 p.m., and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Also, if you can, hit the like button for us. It really helps out our channel. First of all, this new hack that has affected hundreds of companies here in the United States and over a thousand companies worldwide is getting worse. Now get this, in private conversations, the hackers behind the massive ransomware attacks have lowered their demand for to um, basically undo the hack from $70 million for the ransom down to $50 million. Now, here's the problem. If we pay the hackers $50 million, this is going to be bad news for our country. As you can see here, the Re-Evil Group ransomware gang, also known as Soden Okibi, is, a pu is publicly demanding $70 million to restore the data it's holding ransom. And now there's talks that they might be lowering their um, demands to $50 million. If they get paid $50 million, that will not be a good sign for our country at all um, because there will not be a means to, the, to an end. What, what will be the end of this? Will this just continue on week after week after week? Yeah, I think that this is going to be just the start of a much, much larger problem for probably not only our country, but the entire world. And it seems that it's the same group out of Russia over and over and over again. At first, they demanded $5 million from the gas pipeline hack, which actually shut down over 10 states in the United States that actually ran dry of gas. Then it was $10 million for the uh, JBS Meatpacking Company, which is the largest meat producer in the United States. It actually sent meat prices soaring. Uh, $10 million from that, which they got paid on both of those. The FBI says they recovered the $5 million from the first hack, and now they want 50 to $70 million for the latest hack, which is apparently affecting over 1,000 companies. Meanwhile, the White House has not really released an official statement or anything like that. I will keep you up to date on this, but um, it will be interesting to see what happens with this because I think that the tensions between us and Russia and Russian President Vladimir Putin are at all-time highs between this because President Putin does not want to take any responsibility for this at all. He doesn't even want to admit that it's coming from a Russian hacker group. It's not necessarily coming from the Russian government, but a rogue Russian hacker group. Let me know if you think this group is going to get paid. They got paid the first time $5 million. They got paid the second time $10 million. Let me know if you think they're going to get somewhere between $50 and $70 million. And let me know if you think if they get this money, what this means for our country going forward. Because I have a bad feeling about this. You can let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. Next up, I kind of have some good and some bad news regarding the next infrastructure part one and the next stimulus package part two, the negotiations that are going on right now. I'll start with the good news. The good news is this was actually surprising to me. So they're still kind of working out the negotiations on both the part one, the physical infrastructure package, and part two, what's going to be in the part two, uh, the social infrastructure package, aka the human infrastructure package, aka the American Families Plan, aka the next stimulus package, right? It has so many different names. Um, the first one is really known as the uh, physical infrastructure package or the American Jobs Plan. Well, they're kind of working on both these simultaneously, and um, we're kind of getting information about both of them. The, the main ones going on right now is how they're going to pay for part one physical infrastructure package, what the fine details are going to be for that. And we actually got some inf uh, interesting information about that, which is actually good news. And this pertains to 
where the money's coming from. If you've been watching the show, you know that there's $2 trillion of stimulus money that has been passed from the previous six stimulus packages that's just sitting there and has already been approved. The past five stimulus packages that former President Trump passed, uh, only two of them have stimulus checks, but if you've been watching the show, you know that he passed five stimulus packages in total. The other three uh, stimulus packages were smaller packages that had things like uh, other stimulus money for like Paycheck Protection Program and other stimulus provisions. And then the one package, uh, the third stimulus check package, currently passed by um, current President Biden. Okay, six packages total. Of those packages, you know that there's a lot more in these packages than just the stimulus check literally hundreds of different stimulus programs, which we cover almost all of them here on this program, because if it puts money in your pocket, I will let you know about it, okay? Um, well, throughout those six different stimulus packages, there's pretty much some money available from all of them that didn't get spent through all these different type of crazy programs that they got going on, and there's $2 trillion sitting there unspent, okay? And to to spend this money in a different way than what it was normally allocated for through these previous stimulus check programs, they're going to have to re-vote on it. So they're going to use it probably for a part of the next physical infrastructure package and the next stimulus package, and maybe there might even be some left over and they might use it for the next package after that. Well, originally we were hearing over the last several days that they were going to use $600 billion of it uh, of the two trillion. Now, I, really, I should say there's about 1.6 trillion left because we know that 350 billion of it went to states, cities, and counties. And we know that states, cities, and counties are using that money. And some states, cities, and counties are actually issuing their own stimulus checks, um, like the California $600 stimulus check, which actually just um, passed a second round of it, which is going to go out to over 25 million people and $1,100 for people with children up to $75,000 of income. It's a lot. It's like over 25 million people, which is more than the entire population of a lot of states. We have New Jersey that has passed a $500 stimulus check. We have other proposals. In fact, I'll have some information here in a few minutes about some other state stimulus checks uh, in a moment. But uh, we actually have some good news because we originally were hearing last week that they were going to use up to $600 billion of the old stimulus money for the physical infrastructure package, which after the state stimulus money and the $600 billion would have left about $1 trillion that they could use for the next stimulus package. Well, it seems like they're going to use less money for the physical infrastructure package, which will actually leave more money for them to use for the next stimulus package. As you can see here, the bipartisan proposal calls for raising money in a variety of other ways that shield corporations from tax increases. Republicans do not want to raise the corporate tax rate. Uh, Democrats do. So they're kind of in this limbo where um, Republicans aren't going to go for it. Okay, so we're, they're still figuring out these details if there's going to be any tax raises or not. And these are kind of the, some of the details they're still figuring out. The most controversial among Democrats are plans to redirect unused unemployment insurance funds and repurpose $125 billion in untapped COVID relief funds previously designated for state and local government. Now, what's interesting here is they're talking about using $125 billion in untapped COVID-19 relief funds instead of $600 billion. So it looks like, at least at this moment, Instead of taking $600 billion of stimulus money from the unused portion, they're only talking about now taking $125 billion of untapped stimulus money. We will have to see, though, because details are somewhat vague and somewhat changing by the day. So I will keep you updated on this. But I personally take this as good news because... Ultimately, the less they take of the unused stimulus money for the physical infrastructure package, the more money that is available for the next stimulus package. And again, uh, about a trillion dollars would leave if they used all the money for the next stimulus check. That would leave about $3,000 available for stimulus checks. So um, again, there's a lot more than stimulus checks being negotiated on in the next package, including Social Security raises. Medicare expansion to include hearing, dental, vision, hearing aids, 
lower the Medicare eligibility age to age 60 or age 55, student loan debt forgiveness, two years of free college, which will be an absolute game changer for our country. If you can, or anybody pretty much, as long as they don't make you know a lot, a ton of money, can go to college for free, that will be a game changer. Two years of free preschool. I mean, there's a lot they're currently talking about in this next stimulus package. I personally think there's several different items that are being uh, in the works that have a very good chance of passing in this next package that will actually actually be more profound, will actually be um, more like game changing because these are packages, for example, the social security increase, that is like two out of three of them or three out of four of them are changes that would go on forever. They would increase social security forever. The Medicare extra benefits would go on forever. Free college and free preschool would go on forever, okay? These are programs that would actually go on in perpetuity for decades, for hundreds of years. So that would actually be a more important change than just a stimulus check. Now, don't get me wrong. A stimulus check would be amazing. But uh, I think that recurring stimulus checks would be much, much more beneficial than a single stimulus check. But there are some very, very interesting propositions that could end up being in this next package that actually have a very good chance to be in this next package, including the monthly recurring checks called the child tax credits that are only passed for one year that they want to extend until 2025 or even permanently. If you have children, that is actually more important than a single stimulus check as well because it's more money. It's $3,000 per child per year uh, for ages 6 through 17, and under children under the age of 6 is $3,600 per year. So there's a lot of different items that are very, very important in this next package uh, besides just the fourth stimulus check that could be game-changing. Now, there are some Democrats that are not really happy with these changes, and um, the main reason is, is because of the corporate tax rate. There's a lot of Democrats that think that the, uh, the, the corp corporations should pay more money. As you can see here, two major financing mechanisms for the uh, spending proposal is to repurpose unspent funds for unemployment benefits and for state assistance are meeting resistance from a group of Democratic senators who say higher corporate tax rates should be the primary revenue source. The problem with this is uh, Republicans are completely against this, and I don't think they're going to be able to, to raise the corporate tax rate and get any Republicans on board. Just like I, Republicans want to raise gas prices, they want to do a gas tax, which is what they call a use tax, U-S-E. So if you use the roads and the bridges and the infrastructure, then you should pay an additional tax, which helps pay off the infrastructure. Uh, so Republicans are for a gas tax, but they're not for raising corporation uh, corporate tax rate. Um, Democrats are for corporate tax rates, but they're not for a gas tax because that would go against what President Biden has kind of promised that he would not raise any taxes to any uh, average Americans making less than $400,000, and a gas tax would make him kind of go against his word. Um, so Democrats and President Biden are trying to stay away from a gas tax, even if it's a penny, because um, then Republicans could use that against him and say, well, you went against your word, you raised taxes on the average American, and you said you wouldn't do that. Um, so it is kind of a double-edged sword. President Biden does want to raise taxes on corporations and what he calls the wealthy, the 1%, people that make over $400,000, and these corporations that make billions and billions of dollars and sometimes pay $0 in tax. Um, the most notable is, example is when Amazon made $11.2 billion in taxes in just one year and paid $0 in federal tax. In fact, um, in just in this last year, in 2020, there was over 50 of the Fortune 500 companies, so over 10% of the largest companies in America, actually paid $0 in federal tax. And a large portion of them pay just a few percent, like 1% or 2 or 3% in federal tax rate, because there's just so many tax loopholes and tax incentives and tax rebates and foreign tax credits that these corporations can, there's just, and they can do it legally. It's just the way our tax code is. There's just way too many incentives for big business that they can make billions of dollars and pay little to no taxes. In some cases, 
this is absolutely insane. I, I, I'm actually sad saying this. In some cases, corporations make billions of dollars. Not only do they pay zero dollars in federal taxes, but the government actually pays them because they have tax incentive and tax rebates. So in some cases, not only do they pay zero dollars in federal taxes, but they actually get like refunds and rebates to the tune of millions or even billions of dollars. Yeah, if you're thinking the same thing I'm thinking right now, come on, we're on the same wavelength here. I know it's absolutely insane to think that a corporation can make billions of dollars and get refunds from the government, not, not pay a penny, and the government actually pays them. Yeah, it's insane. Now, of this $350 billion that's going out to states, cities, and counties, going out to all 50 states, all counties in the United States, it looks like these Florida stimulus checks, also known as hazard pay, that are going out to some first responders, are going to be going out soon. As you can see here, Florida stimulus checks, $1,000 relief payments issued to teachers and first responders are going to be going out here soon. Florida is set to issue teachers and first responders $1,000 stimulus checks to thank them for their service during the pandemic. The payments, which are due to be sent out later this summer, came as part of a $101 billion state budget signed into law by Governor Ron DeSantis early in July. And I hope that we're going to see more of this. As you can see here, cities can use their federal stimulus money from the third stimulus check package to cover up to $25,000 in hazard pay for anybody that they deem essential workers. Florida happened to pick, at least for this first round, um, teachers and first responders, they can do a second round to uh send it out to more people. City, states, and uh, counties can also do this, and they can deem anybody they, they pick as an essential worker. They can do this up to $25,000 per person, and I think we're going to see a lot more of these come out in the near future. I will keep you up to date on these and other state, city, and county stimulus checks that are for people that not necessarily hazard pay, but just regular old stimulus checks and rent assistance programs. Speaking of that, there is rent assistance programs going on right now in all 50 states. You can actually get up to $25,000 in rent assistance and mortgage assistance programs that are going on right now. Here's the thing about this is that, as you can see here, a fraction of the rent assistance that is uh, already approved ha has, has only gone out. There's only a fraction of it. As you can see here, just $1.5 billion of the $47 billion has been distributed through May 31st as a local government's struggle to set up uh, distribution programs. So basically, this is kind of the most recent report here. That's only about, what is that, about 3% of the money as of June 1st had gone out. So there is still a lot of this money for rent assistance, mortgage assistance, property tax assistance, and utility assistance that is still going to be going out for mortgage assistance, rental assistance, property tax assistance, and utility assistance. I will link you to a video I just did about all the states, cities, and counties doing this and how to apply for this here in just a moment. I also want to say that the CDC extended their eviction moratorium until July 31st. This is likely going to be the final eviction moratorium extension, so just keep that in mind. So again, this has been extended till July 31st, but there are some states that have actually extended it even further. So um, you could be in one of those states. There's Again, there's 50 different states. It would take me a whole video to cover that. If you think uh, you, you might be in this situation, go to Google and look it up after this video uh, if you're in that particular situation to see if your state maybe extended it even further. So I will keep you up to date with everything stimulus check and all these additional stimulus program uh, related here. If you're new to the channel or if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure to subscribe down below. It's completely free to do so and click the bell icon to all notifications to get reminder notifications when we go live with new videos, at, which is every day at 10 a.m. 3 p.m. and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can click this top video here to watch my newest stimulus check video next. This bottom video is how to get mortgage and rental assistance and also the other stimulus checks going out in July, August, and September. And this video is about President Biden's Social Security raise. So click on one of those videos next. Thanks, guys, and I will see you in the next video.